love to do. That's what I was doing at the time. Um, but I quickly realized that, unfortunately, the way that the the system got, um, it was almost impossible to manage a fighter and, and be successful with the fighter um, with what was in place in Philadelphia at the time. So, you know, like anything else, you know, the only thing you can do to make it better is to do it yourself. And, you know, thanks to Will Ruiz and the relationship we had, Will was a guy that I used to call all the time to help match uh, the fighters that I had um, uh, uh, managing. And uh, he would help me out. So we called, we were talking, we've been planning. And, you know, and the dream finally came through when when a long time friend of mine, uh, I can sincerely say a part of the family, um, approached me one day. He was a big supporter of of my fighters and the events that I was involved in. And uh, one day he just approached me and asked me about you know my ideas with with the boxing industry. And we sat down and we had a long talk and and a heart to heart. And, you know, he just basically said, listen, you guys have what you guys need. You guys have the knowledge, the resources. I have my my part into it. And he said, let's do it. I mean, if you guys are willing, I'm willing. I love boxing as well. Obviously, I, I've been supporting you for a while. And that's my partner, John Miranda, our partner and family member, John Miranda, uh, I really believe he's, if not just as big as a part of hard hitting, even bigger. I love him because he does not want none of the, he just wants to, you know, be behind us and support us and everything we do. Um, you talk to him, he'll tell you the same. This is all for, for us, but he is the biggest one of the biggest parts of hard hitting promotion so i, I really want to thank him uh for his role in, in the company will how, will how'd you come up with hard hitting we well, hard hitting but even or not you know uh, thanks to god and, and thanks to you guys again for this opportunity um well, my dad is an old trainer one of those trainers they always then he had the opportunity with a promoter to move his fighters. And one time we was in um, his house and we was talking, him and my brother, Louis, Louis, my dad, Marco, that he passed away. Also my oldest brother, um, Marcos Jr., they also passed away. Um, we was in his house and we was talking about the situation and all the, the obstacles that he had to um Pass to try to get one of his fighters to any of those events to make them to get him a fight to make them participate in one of these events. It was so hard, nobody given opportunities to none of his fighters. And we started talking and talking. I started managing, and then we start we started messing around. We said, let's start the promotion business and let's call it hard hitting because everybody that we train hit hard. And we started like that with the company like that, and um, and I did my first show in the in the Orlando area, yeah? and uh, it was a somewhat good show. Then my second show in the, was in the Ohio area. It was a sold out show, and from there, me and Manny started our relationship, talking and talking about the situation that was going in boxing. That nobody gave the opportunity to these fighters, you know, to to able to participate in this show to be active. And do some some you know 50-50 um fights, competitive fights with, with our fighters and other trainers fighters. And me and Manny, we started talking, we hit it off real good. And then thanks to John Miranda, they also got into the team. He's, he's been a great help and for hard hitting promotion. And um also we would like to say thanks to John, John um I forgot his last name. Um, Manny, what is his last name? Um, John. Uh, uh, Yanni. Uh, uh, Yanni, yeah, which is which is the connection to me, to 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 me and and John. Uh, he was he was the catapult to to put us together. Unfortunately, 
He is another uh, 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 a part of the team that really never wants none of the limelight. He just wants to stay behind the scenes. But he's he's my wife's cousin, and he's he's part of the team as well as as John is. But he's been re- behind the scenes for the last couple of fights. Um, but you guys will see him around. Uh, the fights and just stays stays on 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 the outskirts of it. Um, we'll be releasing some pictures with 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 the whole team. I I know it's gonna go against what they what they prefer, but it's it's time to not just show uh, uh, me and Will's face, exactly. which are the faces of the team, but but you know also the people that move this, and it's and it's these two gentlemen. And and obviously uh, uh, the family as well, our wives that are a big big part of it, and and the hard hitting what we call the hard hitting girls and yeah. staff. Hey, uh, hey, Will, um, Alex uh, Ayala is checking in. Ayala. Yeah, Ayala. He says, uh, um, he says what somebody says. Uh, Will, I'm still waiting to put one of my guys on one of your cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He got some. He got some good warriors. He got some good fighters, and um, they always come to to fight. Um, real soon we're gonna get in contact and try to um, bring one of his fighters to over there to the Philadelphia area. Yeah. Wow! But um, so he does got some good fighters. Alex Ajala. He come from the for the gym for New York. He also was a fighter himself. You know, you know, got a good background. Wow! wow. So, um, pick. Going through your last couple of big events, right? So last year you guys had um, two cards uh, on Showtime, and one was coming from I, I'm correct about that, right? One was at the Fillmore with Devin Haney, right? Uh both both the Showbox shows that we had were at the 2300 Arena, okay, uh, in South Philadelphia. Thanks to Roger. Shout out to Roger. Uh, uh, the owner and 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 president of uh, 2300 Arena, great guy, uh, loved doing shows there. Um, so yeah, shout out to Roger for 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 always being there for us and at, at that arena. Hey, we, we were talking about you. You were enlightening us on a before we started about how you guys got started in the first couple of events. Can you go ahead and tell? Uh, those stories again so we, everybody can hear those. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, um, we're just blessed. So I, I, I keep saying this, but I can't keep, you know, I, I can't repeat this enough. We are blessed. Um, you know, we are what we what we consider, right? Uh, uh, and being honest, uh, uh, a young promotion, we, we've, our first show was in October uh, 31st, I believe, Mischief Night uh, 2015 um, was our first show. And we did that at the Sheet Metal Workers Hall. Uh, another shout out to the Sheet Metal Workers Hall for their hospitality. Um, great, uh, great people. Nice, nice people. Great venue. Um, you know, it's a great, great place to host parties and everything like that. So shout out to the Sheet Metal Workers Hall. Uh, Donna. She, she's a great, great uh, person to deal with. And uh, we had nothing but great experiences. But that was where we went for our first show. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we were talking, the partners, uh, uh, John Miranda, John uh, Verano, uh, Will and myself, and kind of figuring out where we're going to start this at and how we're going to start it. And then we just kind of got tired of talking and said, listen, either we're going to do it or we're not. And we had a month. We, we said, okay, let's pick the date. It was a month uh, um, ahead of the time that we picked it. And we said, let's do it. And uh, we, we went out and we did it. We started getting fighters. At the time, we really didn't have too many fighters signed. Um, but our goal was to, to start moving. So at the time, I was already managing uh, Angel Ocasio, which was... Uh, you know, one of the first fighters for hard hitting. Will had some fighters as well that he was dealing with. Uh, um, and we we picked some of Philadelphia's, you know, local and great, great fighters like Garrett Wilson. I mean, 
great, great friend of hard hitting. Always, I'm always uh, thankful to him for 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 allowing us to 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 host his our first main event as him being the main event fighter. Um, and and that's how we launched. It was it was mischief night 2015. And Garrett Wilson and and um, Pedro Pedro and Toro Rodriguez. Yeah. Pedro and Toro Rodriguez um, was 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 his opponent. And and in reality, uh, the first opponent had dropped out, and Pedro jumped in. I, I believe it was like a week and a half prior mm -hmm. to the fight, and Pedro was training, and you know he jumped in there, and what a war that was! Talk about uh, uh, Philly versus Philly. You know, in a last-minute fight, that 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 was a great, great heavyweight fight. Those two guys went at it. Uh, talk about Philly versus Philly very quickly, if I can go into this. You know, a lot of people frown upon Philly versus Philly, and I agree. I agree to a certain point. There sometimes, you know, the fights just make no sense, but sometimes they make all the sense in the world. And Pedro and, and and Garrett were best friends. I mean, I can literally say they were best friends. I think their their wives were sitting together when, when this fight happened. And they're still best friends after the fight. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, what people are saying that Philly versus Philly, you know, that there's wars outside in certain circumstances, yes, that can happen. But it, it all depends on the promotion and, and how the promotion, um, you know, uh, uh, promotes the event. I, I really believe that, you know, I could talk for ourselves. We're God-fearing people, and we always want the best. Obviously, it's the business, and obviously, it's a sport that, you know, for those, for those three minutes of each round, you're trying to hurt yourself. But at the end of the day, it's a sport, and sportsmanship is our first thing. Um, we don't we don't really uh, um, try to push the the big, you know, hype of two fighters really not liking each other. I mean, I really love the throwback old school fighting because of that. They they're, they're always two guys that were very respectful to one another. And, and the trash talking wasn't much, but when they got in that ring, they fought and they fought their hearts out. So to me, um, Philly versus Philly does work and, and it does catapult a lot of fighters to, to the next level. And that was our start, was that event. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to everybody checking in. We got a bunch of people on here. Uh, appreciate all you guys checking in. Again, just let everybody know uh, this is Manny Rivera, and that is Will Ruiz from Hard Hitting Promotions. They are putting on a fantastic event February 23rd at the Met. The first time boxing will be held there in 65 years. Back in the, uh, it started, uh, the Met started uh, broadcasting boxing weekly. They would hold fights weekly starting in 1937 all the way up to 1954 uh, around the uh, World War II is when everything disbanded. And they're the opera house, so they just never got back to to, to promoting fight or showcasing fights in there. But uh, through the pure genius, Manny, John, and Will over here, their pure genius and their pure grit went ahead and seized the opportunity to put the first event in 65 years at the Met, February 23rd. It is a Saturday. The event is three quarters sold out. So if you're if you're watching this and you ain't got a ticket yet, you better go get it. Um, shout out to everybody checking in. Mike G, uh, Brett Reed from Buddy Boxing Brotherhood. Thank you, Damian DMC Can. Thanks so much. Um, Larosa Gadwin, the WBA International Champ, the hard hitting promotions very own. Checking in, uh, Kristen McGrew. She is a great boxing mind from. Uh, in your corner boxing, also boxing elite. Uh, great pose straight from her. So thank you so much, everybody checking in uh, again. February 23rd, uh, Philadelphia, Broad Street. Bring a box of back to Broad Street at the Met. So exciting. What does, uh, Will, you first, what does this mean to you, bringing back this event to the Met? What does this mean to you? 
Wow. I'm so excited. This event is, is historical. And for me, from my background, from my dad, I do it with all the respect and all my pleasure. And it's something, it's bigger than everything I ever did in boxing with the respect of my dad that was the influence, the one that taught me in boxing. is make it so huge. This event is so huge, but my dad was an old time fighter. It's so he make it so huge, and so more interesting for me to do it to all the people and the fans from Philadelphia and all over the world. You know, it's very special. This event is very, very special for me, for my family, for the hard hitting family. You know, like I said again, all the fans. You know, we all the fans to always put. A great show, not only a good show, a great show, a good competitive show that everybody will enjoy with the family and nobody knows who's going to win. And that will make hard-hitting promotion what is hard-hitting promotion. Also, I would like to give um, a shout-out to um, one of the guys that also started with me in my first show in Orlando, um, Aaron Rodriguez and his father, Mike Rodriguez. Very good fight fellas. From he live in Ohio, very good guy, very good guys. Absolutely, well said, uh, Manny. Your thoughts? Uh, this big event you got coming up February twenty third at the Met. What does this mean to you, Manny? Um, it means everything. It means everything. It means everything to me, and it, it really, it really means everything to me for a little different reason than than Will. As well, his father was a big influence. And not just his life, but a lot of fighters in the Philadelphia area. He was a he was a, a, a cornerstone and one of the best uh, uh, trainers uh, in Philadelphia. Um, to me, it, it it means everything for the Philadelphia fighting scene for the for the for the people of Philadelphia that has been supporting uh, boxing for a long time in Philadelphia. Um, one of the things that I've seen um, through the years that I've been involved in boxing, and you know, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give all the respect that you know the people that came before us has laid out. Uh, legendary promoters in Philadelphia that has put shows for years and has set the platform for us. I give all the respect uh, to them for keeping Philadelphia alive and, and, and us being able to, to um, progress in that, in that platform that they built. Um, but, but what I, what I did see in Philadelphia boxing, and I would say they even have to agree is that, you know, Philadelphia uh, boxing scene kind of, kind of went underground. And what I mean by underground, it wasn't supported by the mainstream media. You know, uh, uh, the last time you grabbed a newspaper and on the front cover or three, four page articles in the Daily News are long gone. They were, they're long gone. I mean, you know, they, there's been big fights in the city of Philadelphia, meaning Danny Garcia, great friend of ours, uh, has fought in the city. You know, obviously Bernard Hopkins and you know all the great champions that 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 has come out of Philadelphia in the past you know 10, 15, 20 years. But there hasn't been that that Philly support uh, when it comes to the main media. You know, it's it's always football, baseball, basketball, and and never boxing. And there's been some legendary fights, some great fights. I mean. You know, we we are proud, very proud of one thing we have accomplished in our short uh, 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 span that we've been promoting boxing in the city is that we were the first promoters to bring Showtime to Philadelphia. Um, something that you know, no, no, even even the local media, even the boxing media, never really highlighted. You know. Showtime themselves on air were very, very uh, uh, shocked and surprised that it was the first time they ever came to Philadelphia to do a boxing event, as historic uh, as this city is when it comes to boxing. So, 
you know, we're, we were very, very proud uh, to doing that uh, last year, not just once, but twice. And, and really never got no media coverage for it when it came to, to you know, the, the mainstream media. Uh, always thank, thank uh, for you guys, the, the, the supporters of boxing, the local writers that, that really always supported uh, not just us, but boxing in general. Um, and if it wasn't for you guys, the, the word w- wouldn't get out. But um, that's what I seen missing. That's what I seen missing in in in, in the sport of boxing. It, you know, to me, it was it was more of an underground. It was a small niche of fans that were coming to these events. And if you go from event to event, it was predominantly the same people. You would see, no matter who who was the promoter, you know, I would say 60, 70 percent of the fans were the same fans. So, which was great because there were hardcore fans in Philly. Um, and, and now what I've seen with this event, which is something that I believe the Philadelphia fans would have been yearning for a long time. Uh, I've been praying and, and, and working and, and, and our team will, our partners, you know, behind the scenes been working for a long time is to change that demographic and, and, and trying to get the mainstream media back. On, on on tilt with with you know supporting the Philadelphia boxing scene and um, Josh Gordon from president uh, of regional president of Live Nation, uh, great great individual, um, great friend of friends that I have when we were introduced and and shout out to uh, Schatz and Steinberg. Uh, which were, were the catalyst to make this happen. Uh, great, great friends of mine, uh, uh, Stephen Schatz, um, known for about 20 years, um, put this together, this relationship together. And since we started talking, uh, um, Joff uh, lived by his word and said he wants to bring boxing to the mat. And he, he would love to, you know, to, to bring not just one show, but to bring a series. And that's what we're doing is not, this is not going to be a one and out. This is going to be a constant uh, 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 fight um, venue. We're bringing a series, a number of fights throughout the year to the Met, which is what we're talking about. I've heard some rumors about uh, that, you know, boxing hasn't left Broad Street. Um, there's been boxing events, but not a constant uh, basis as when the Blue Horizon was there. And now, and now that's what we're proud of that, that, you know, is not going to be a one, one thing. We're actually doing a boxing series where we're going to be uh, rolling out the next date soon. Uh, we got some really big surprises coming up uh, uh, for even this show that we will be letting out pretty soon. Very excited about it. So tune in to social media um, for for this. Tune in to you you guys because you guys will be one of the first to to kind of announce this. Um, so um, you know, saying all this, what Live Nation did for us, what Job Gordon did for us, was be able to to use his platform to use Live Nation and 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 the uh, and and the partnership that we have. Um, to to bring the national and and local mainstream media for this. I mean, we we had a press conference two weeks ago uh, for this event, um, and it was just to it was just to announce that we were doing a boxing series, uh, to announce our partnership, and to announce that boxing will be constantly back on Broad Street. And I mean, you guys, you guys seen it. I mean, channel three, channel six, channel 10, you know, it was on the front cover of the Delhi News, a two pre- two page spread on the Delhi News in the Inquirer. This thing hit the New York Times, USA Today, the AP uh, 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 News, <coughs> Business Journal, I mean, uh, ESPN, uh, uh, The Ring Magazine. You know, so, and that's unprecedented for, for what you're talking about, 
you know, Philadelphia boxing. I mean, it, it, it hasn't happened for years. Um, so I, I'm very, very thankful to Live Nation, to the Met for partnering up for, with us. But more than anything, for giving Philly fans what we've been yearning for. And I'm going to say we because I am a big fan of boxing. Um, what we've been yearning for in Philadelphia and it's to bring boxing back to the mainstream. I think our long-term goal is when you talk about Philadelphia sports, now you're talking about the Eagles, you're talking about the Flyers, you're talking about the Phillies, you're talking about the Sixers, and you're talking about boxing, Philadelphia boxing. And that's something that's been missing, I, I have to say, since the 80s, probably, I don't know, I would have to say early 90s. Um, but the media uh, attention that this event has been getting is wonderful. And that's all thanks to Live Nation and the Met. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Uh, perfectly well said. Beautiful. Um, shout out to everybody. A lot more people checking in. Uh, World Combat Sports, Scotty White. Thanks so much for checking in, man. Good uh, good uh, boxing analyst and, and combat media. Uh, Mike Massa checking in, man. Awesome. Uh, Mary Brown, um, Margarito Lopez, check it in. Uh, uh, Margarito Lopez uh, Romero wrote something in Spanish that I cannot read, so you guys can read that later. <laughs> Margarito Lopez, so I'll chime in there. Margarito Lopez is a great, great friend of mine. Uh, he, he, so we go back about 16, 17 years uh, I'm just going to say something really quick in Spanish. Gracias, Margarito, por estar presente aquí con nosotros. Nosotros siempre eh, estamos apoyándonos uno a nosotros. So te doy muchas gracias por, por estar aquí con nosotros. Margarito Lopez, um, uh, like I said, he was, I was involved uh, with him as a friend, as an assistant trainer with Tony Brazante, which if you don't know who Tony Brazante is, he's currently... Uh, 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 oddly enough, ironically enough, our guy Jeremy Cuevas, head trainer, um, he was Margarito Lopez's head trainer, and uh, Tony Brazante was one of the guys that you know extended his hand to me as a young kid and brought me in and 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 you know involved me in what he was doing at the time with training fighters. And Margarito Lopez was one of those fighters that I got to travel with. And I got to learn the game, the good part and the dirty part about the game. And, uh, yeah, great, great guy. So thank you, Margarito. Absolutely. Um, again, for everybody watching, February 23rd, uh, North Broad Street, the Met, right here. These guys put on um, a lot of fights. February 23rd at the Met, bringing boxing back to Broad Street after 65 years, and it's the first in 65 years of many to come. And with that being said, Will, I would like to go over the the fight card with you because I'm like, this is this is the exciting part. I want to. How many I, fights you got going on that night, Will? Are you, are you sure you are you sure you ready for this? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. <laughs> Philadelphia, are you ready? We got 12 bouts, guys. 12 exciting competitive bouts. Well, <laughs> that's a lot, man. Let's start with the main event. Jeremy Cuerva, Steven Ortiz, for the state title. What do you think about that fight? Jeremy Cuerva, 11-0 against Steven Ortiz, 9-0. They're going to be competing for the Pennsylvania state title. Dude, this is... What this, a fight. Yes, Philly on Philly, both. I, lo I love when prospects like this meet, right? They're both undefeated. They both are very talented. They're coming into their own, and they're meeting for, for a belt, for a stake. For In the main event uh, of this historic event, it, it means so much to both of these fighters. I can't call it. I can't call this fight. This is going to be one of those, like, it's going to be a throwback to October 30th, 2015, the main event. We're going to have a war. You all know who's going to win, and it's just... Stop, stop. You just stop there. You ain't got to tell the other 11. Just let's go right now. Let's go. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. The, the Colme event, 
We also gonna have Sammy the Tsunami Tia, eight rounder, also competing for the state title at the 140 pounds against Trishan Wiggins, also from Pennsylvania. You know, Wiggins, everybody knows, a fella that always come to fight and come to try to earn that W. You know, it's gonna be another exciting fight. You know, also we're gonna have in our debut with hard hitting Malik Hawkins in our eight rounds versus Glenwin Ortiz that coming in a crazy knockout, beating a, a own guy from Philadelphia, Glenwin Ortiz against Malik Hawkins. What do you what is your thoughts on that fight? Oh, I gotta ride with my man Al Yard. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just, uh, you know, Malik's the man. You know, you know, I love the hair. I, um, I just, um, I, I can't, I can't wait. It's hard to keep saying. I basically want to say the same thing over again. We're gonna have a good boxing match in that one. It's gonna be a great war. There will be some action. Every, every last fight, of the, every last one of these twelve bouts will have action. In them. Believe that. So, and that's what you guys do. You bring it, bell to bell, with great matchups. And I expect nothing less for this one. And I just can't. I wish it was February 23rd right now so I could be there. Yeah. So I just want to, can I chime in real quick? Uh, uh, I just want to say something about these top three fights. I mean, th these top three fights uh, here, I mean, any network would love to pick it up. Any any top networks. Down, I mean, no offense to any of the uh, uh, networks. Um, and, and I say this with all respect, but these three fights are probably better than a lot of the fights that's been happening on any of these networks. Um, you know, I honestly, honestly, you know, if, if you're going to be, if you're going to put odds on this, I mean, all three of them have to be very, very close odds. Uh, um, there's no wide margin. Uh, um, Every one of these fights can go either way. Um, when it comes to the lineup of how they're going to happen, to tell you the truth, um, we don't even know. I mean, obviously, Jeremy Cuevas is going to be the main event. Uh, um, Malik might be the co-main event on it. Um, shout out to Everett McNeely. Um, he's, he's a great, great um, uh, partner in this. In this event, um, has he's been helping us out tremendously for this card. Uh, Sammy, Samuel Tia, what can you say about Samuel Tia? I mean, what can you say about Samuel Tia? When, when you talk about a, a person that is not supposed to achieve what he has, I mean, he's the, uh, 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 to the consensus, right? Uh, he's the epitome of that. Uh, um, you know, if you know Samuel Tia's... Uh, a story. It, it's just, it's just one to to make a movie out of. Um, Hardworking kid. Uh, he's what I call one of the kids that is the heart of the city. He's a SEPTA. Shout out to SEPTA. He's a SEPTA bus driver. Uh, works hard every day. You know, holds a full time job in, in a in a full time sport as boxing, you know, need to be, um, pulled out one of the biggest upsets of, of 2018, um, which I don't know if it's been kind of said, but it needs to be said. It was on showtime. Uh, you know, nobody gave him a, a chance. We believed in him. We knew he was going to win. And we were very, very excited for that night. And sure enough, he did what he was supposed to, worked very hard for that and 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 pulled out the upset and pulled it out clearly. You know, it wasn't even, a, you know, a lot of people um, could say, oh, well, it was at his home. No, it, it, that he would have won that fight with three blind mice. Um, it was an unbelievable performance by him. And, and we're, we're very, very happy to have having Samuel Tia um, on the card. So with that being said, I mean, these three fights are, are, are all, you know, uh, uh, special and they all could be on any network at any time. And, and, and 
we're bringing them to you, to, to, to the fans of Philadelphia. And that's, that's what we do. We, we put fights that, that the fans, you know, are going to come and watch because they're not only supporting their fighter, they really don't know who's going to win the fight. You know, and that's and that's boxing, and that's the core of Philadelphia boxing, Philly versus Philly, and good matchups where people really can can say that who's gonna win, but they're not sure. And that's that's the lore of what hard hitting promotion really strives to do when we when it comes to matching, and that's all credit to to Will Ruiz, which is the guy, the mastermind that puts puts these fights together, you know, kudos to him. Absolutely. Um, shout out to Matthew Ward from the weigh-in checking in, man. It's a good local local media guy there. Appreciate you. Greg Hackett checking in. Appreciate you, you tuning in. Uh, Luis from Bloody Boxing Brotherhood. Thanks so much. Uh, Orlando Fernandez is checking in from NBA Boxing. Thanks so much. And Manny, just to piggyback on what you were saying, that was – Samuel Tia versus Kennison Jr. was my favorite fight of that night back at, you know, you know, it was great to see, you know, all the other stuff, you know, I love, you know, Boots, taking people out, all the other fights are great, I love Rosa, I love everybody, but that was the most entertaining fight for me uh, from your event, so I know Tsunami Sam is going to come bring the pain uh, at the end of February here, so we can't wait. Absolutely, absolutely, I have no, no... No doubt, we have no doubt that Samuel Tia will leave the Met as 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 the Pennsylvania uh, state champion. I have no doubt. And you say, you know, and you say that tongue in cheek as far as like these top three uh, bouts could be on any network. That's a hundred percent true. And you know, everybody needs to realize this: these the top three bouts alone, and we're not talking. About the no, nine. We haven't even gone into the rest of the cards yet. We, yeah, we haven't talked about the nine other ones. We're just talking about the top three of this event. The net first first bout in sixty five years there, bringing bringing boxing back to Broad Street, February twenty third. Hard hitting promotions, they doing it bell to bell. Complete actions. Will, Manny, you got something else to say? I just want to say one thing, and and and, and going back. Going back to what we were talking about on what makes uh, uh, great fights and what we're most proud of, that it's something that that uh, um, I would say I would say the the Hall of Famers um, of the promotion has done for boxing uh, in Philadelphia um, was that you know they signed fighters and they brought them up. From 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 a pro debut to all the way up to to championship contendency, uh, 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 and that's what we're doing. I mean, when you talk about those three top fights, those three, you know, red corner fighters. Because I'm not gonna say A side, B side, because there really isn't no A side, B side on these fights. But those three. Fighters on the red side, and I'm talking about Jeremy Cuevas, uh, uh, Malik, Samuel Tia, Malik Hawkins. Those are hard-hitting fighters. You know, th- there are fighters. We're not, you know, uh, uh, using other promoters' fighters to make a great card. We are so proud of that, that, you know, um, we're putting fights with fighters that we're signing, that we're bringing up, that... You know, we brought up from from pro debuts like like Jeremy Cuevas. You know, he was a pro debut fighters with no national, with no, you know, amateur big, big accolades. And now it's showcasing at the Met in one of the biggest fights of the year with an undefeated record of 11 and 0 with eight knockouts. That's what we're most proud of is, is the success that we have been doing. And not just promoting these fights, but what we have been doing with these fighters that we are signing. And that's something that's been missing from Philadelphia uh, uh, boxing in a long time. And that's what I was saying earlier, which was was what what was missing in the sport of boxing was a promoter that not only did 
good events, but took care of their fighters and brought them up the right way. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're proud of. You know, and that's um, absolutely that's as well said, because you guys have a vision, right? So that's, that's the thing. You have a vision and you have a goal that you're trying to accomplish. And Manny, me and you had this conversation before your, your goal, your goal at hard hitting and, and hard hitting's goal is to box. Uh, Philadelphia was known as the Mecca of boxing at one point. It's, it's not, it's not anymore. You're trying to make it down again. It used to be lo- known as the lion's den. It's not known that, like that anymore. You're trying to make that happen again. So that's your goal. That's what you focus on. You know, if, if you put out a quality product, like you always do, the money is going to come. But obviously, you guys keep focusing, and, and you have kept doing what you're doing, keeping your eye on that that same vision. You, have, you told me earlier, you have blinders on, man. You have blinders. You don't see, you don't see anybody. You see the goal. So that's what makes you guys so successful. And, uh, and not just me, my whole the whole team. Will's like that. John's like that. The whole team are like that. We don't focus on anything else but what what we have ahead, and that's 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 why you know we are where we are. Thank God. All right. Will, uh, I think I've calmed down a little bit enough. I think you can lay on a couple more fights. I'll get excited. Yeah. <laughs> and my new thing, you know, every every show and every card that we put together, everything is teamwork. We all help each other. And any part of the promotion situation that had to be handled, you know, and me just saying that, now I'm going to continue with the next fight. Are you ready? No. <laughs> Come on. Now we're going to have. 19 and 0 guy, Demetrix Baylor. 19 and 0 super middleweight, another eight rounder, another exciting fight. Oh, is that a surprise? Is that a <laughs> is that a surprise that we're throwing out there? <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> okay. For the first time, that name has been announced in our event. Nobody knew about this. For the first time, that's been announced. That's a, that's a that's an added bonus to this card. So you know when you're talking about Philadelphia uh, shows and you're talking about three eight rounders on a card that is not or top or rank, it's not you know one of the big name quote unquote promoters in, in, in the state. I mean, that's saying something, and and it's and it's proving what what our goal is, you know, and what our mission is, which we're very very proud. You should be. Now we're gonna continue. Now we're gonna have Brandon, the gift Pizarro out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's gonna be fighting. Zach Rancy, everybody knows Zach Rancy. He beat a, a couple of undefeated fighters. He always comes to fight. It's going to be a great fight in a six-rounder. You know, Brandon's always ready and always put an action fight every time he fight. You know, that's going to be also an exciting fight. Let me say one thing about Brandon, this young man, Will. Um, Brandon Pizarro, obviously you guys know he is charismatic. He's a showman. He comes to put a show on from from the clothes that he wears to, to the style he fights. It's always an entertaining fight. He comes to please the fans. He comes to put on a show. And he is, in reality, we have to say he's a baby when it comes into the sport of boxing. You know, uh, uh, 18 years old, um, you know, young kid. Uh, really working hard, um, you know, with a record of uh, uh, 12 and one now. Um, you know, he was the youngest kid to sign pro, um, believed in hard hitting, uh, signed with us, like all the other fighters they could have signed with somebody else, signed with us after having all those accolades. So, you know, we're very proud of Brandon and, 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 he is going to be one of those fighters that that will be up top pretty soon. His time will come. Like I said, he's really young, so there's no there's no hurry with him. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you you know, you have to put him in tough, and that's how you're gonna know." You know, those people that say that are people that you know are looking for their best interest and not the best interest of the fighter. You know, Brandon Pizarro time will come and he will show the world that 
he is among one of the best, best lightweights in the country. I'll tell you what I really like about Brandon. Um, everything that you just said, his talent at such a young age is remarkable. He has such such a natural boxing talent at such a young age, and that's that takes that's world champion written on it right there. And um, uh, after your last event, you know we're the media, so I'm always honest with my assessments. Uh, I thought Brandon uh, easily won the fight. I didn't say he didn't. I didn't say he lost. I just said that uh, my comments were that he was he shows immaturity in the ring, and he does. Um, he likes to do that slow recoil, that very dramatic slow recoil when he lands a good shot, and it's, and it's showboating and all that. And you know, I I said something against that. And then when I posted your when I posted uh, your repost of the Met, uh, he commented on my post and said, "I I looked at your your critic video, and I'm going to do better for you next time." Uh, I'll tell you what. Awesome. I'll tell awesome. you what. That is, you know, that shows he's listening, he's looking, uh, he's understanding things, he's growing, he's maturing. And if he matures along with his talent, there's not, not even not even a doubt in my mind that that young kid will be world champion, unified world champion, guaranteed, man, guaranteed. That just going to get better and better, that kid. He's just going to get absolutely. better and better. Absolutely. We're also going to have in the card another NBA champion, Gatwin Rosa. What can I say about this kid? You know, I love this kid. Work hard in the gym. A great background hit with his dad. He didn't do did that much amateur fight himself, you know, but he got a great trainer, you know, that his dad was one of the old timers fighters and he always listened to his dad and he always ready 100% to give it all in the ring, you know. Always a big shout out to him and all the, the hard hitting fighters. Gad, Gad, Gadwin shows, you know, the, the good thing about Gadwin is that he does not show that limited amateur background. He, he's very polished yeah. for being a young pro, uh, especially in his last fight when he won the NBA championship. Yeah. He, fought, he fought a veteran. I don't care what your record is. That, that man that he fought had 132 bouts under his belt. And when you fight a veteran, a veterans are very crafty. They're very smart. They get you to fight their fight and they impose their will. And Gadwin did not allow that veteran to impose his will. So for his ring maturity, for his savvy, his sense of boxing at such a young boxing age. I know he's in his 20s, so he's, he's right in his prime of his, not prime, below his prime. But to have those, th that thought process at such a young age in boxing is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And yeah, that guy is a veteran. He before we jump, jump on to Davis or everybody and go to this <laughs> and with those guys, you know. We're also going to have in the, in the card another young kid that's doing better and better every, every time he fights. And uh, his name is Christian Tapia, you know, seven and old kid, strong kid. He's like a little bull, you know, that's also going to be a great fight. We're going to have a little kid, um, the 118 pounds, Emmanuel Salcerito Rodriguez fighting against a Mexican guy, Jose Lopez. That's going to be another great fight. And then we got the girls. Tamar, Tamar is Riley doing the, free, the her debut and her hidden promotions. That also going to be a nice, exciting fight. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I like about uh, the Israeli princess there, right? So uh, I watch a lot of her clips, watch her a lot of her videos. Uh, she's obviously, um, you know, an Instagram model, right? I'm just saying. That's what she does. She 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 puts on, you know, she's an attractive uh, young woman that that puts herself out there, not inappropriately, just what she does. But I tell you what, she can throw some hands. She's got she has got some power. Her form is beautiful, and I love watching. I think I a lot of times I like watching uh, women boxing more than men because of uh, their determination to outshine men, and because of women seem to be more. Um, intricate when they come to their game plan and their fight plan their defenses seem to be a lot better their their, their combinations uh I, I i can't wait to see her fight i'm very very interested in seeing the debut of the israeli princess yeah, it's gonna be an exciting um, one absolutely um let me just say something about uh tamar um i don't know if you guys were present or seen the the fight night live uh um, broadcast of that 
on Facebook. Um, she was she is hard hitting promotions first female signing. Um, and yes, uh, to piggyback off of what you just said, she is a very pretty young lady. Um, she does, uh, uh, you know, love to showcase herself on social media and everywhere else, just like, you know, the men do, uh, and the fighters do, and, you know, they like to wear their swag, which is what they call it, and, yep. and, and showcase for the ladies. She loves to do the same, but make no mistake, she is an unbelievable fighter. She is 2-0 and with two knockouts, and she's coming to do the same again. I mean, she's taking the sport very seriously. She actually uh, recently relocated to uh, uh, Vegas to, to take boxing very se seriously, to train hard for this event, um, which, is, which is a testament of what we're saying. She's not just another pretty face. She is one of a kind when it comes to uh, her boxing style and boxing ability that she has. So, so we're very, very excited uh, for Tamar um, addition. Um, and once again, I just want to say this. Every fighter that Will has mentioned is not just a fighter that is on this card um, in the red corner. They are hard-hitting fighters, except for the one special fighter that was announced today. Um, everybody else is a hard-hitting fighter. We are trying to strive for a better way of bringing fighters up the rankings, and we're living up to that. Absolutely. And everybody watching, uh, if you don't know Tamar's story, the Israeli princess, uh, I encourage you to go to her Instagram account. Uh, I believe her Instagram account is Israeli princess. Correct. Go to her Instagram account, uh, scroll down, you'll see her story and how she got into boxing. And you will be very surprised and intrigued about this young lady. Absolutely. When you read that story, guaranteed, you know, I led with the pretty face, but I tell you, I kid you not, exactly what Manny just said. She is a must watch in the ring. I cannot wait. I am excited. Is that all the bouts we have? We have more. No, no, oh. we, we're still missing. We're still missing. <laughs> Benny Sinakin in the light heavyweight division. He's going to be fighting, you know, a four rounder, also a hard hitting fighter. He's already 2 and all, you know, trying to improve himself. Benny Sinakin. I, I'm a huge, I'm a monstrous Benny, the Jewish Bulldog Sinakin fan. Um, <laughs> Just a fantastic, intelligent, well-mannered, mature young man that just knows what he wants out of life and knows what he wants out of what he what he wants out of boxing. But that being said, if you meet this young man and you talk to him, you will be blown away by his charisma, his intelligence, his his thought process, and any, you're holding a conversation with him. But then you watch him in the ring, and his name is the Jewish Bulldog for a reason. This young man. Is savage in the ring and guaranteed come February 23rd, you will get nothing less from the Jewish Bulldog. He will go. Unbelievable, yeah. Crazy kid. Very good, very good fighter. Also, we're going to have a, as a pro debut, uh, Joshua Rosa, you know, so a very talented kid. Um, he also going to be um, one part, part of the hard hitting promotion. He's going to be fighting a four rounder. And Manny could tell you a little bit about this kid. He's a great amateur fighter. Yeah, Joshua Rosa is a Philadelphia born and raised, uh, uh, you know, young young uh, kid from, you know, one of the toughest neighborhoods in Philadelphia called the Badlands. Um, you know, his father, um, amongst other 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 people, are his trainers and and influence, and through through the sport of boxing and baseball, um, which is sports in general, I love, you know, he has, he has sur surpassed all the temptations of, of, of the streets. And, and it's one of the, one of the things that we love about boxing. 
because through through the history of boxing, it was it was always uh, uh, when it came to the athlete uh, side, it was a it's a poor poor man sport uh, to entertain you know the world. So uh, with that being said, you know uh, like every other fighter, but Josh is, is a great kid. I've seen him grow. Um, you know, since since a baby, uh, with his father, um, great guy, uh, has been around boxing all his life, and we're so proud that you know he's venturing into the into the pro rankings, and 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 once again has chosen hard hitting promotion to do so with to 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 do his his you know his pro debut, which is which is which is. You know, the little things that people might think, oh, he's just a, a pro debut. But I'm so proud of that because, you know, his father is somebody that I know, you know, back when I was just training guys, back when hard hitting wasn't even thought of. And, and, and now that we have this platform, you know, um, and we're able to do exactly what I've been saying all along, it's it's heart, you know, heartfelt for me. And, and it's, and it, and it really, really is gratifying for me that, you know, it, it, how, how, you know, everything revolves and, and, and now, you know, we're the people that, that, that these fighters are looking at to, to try to guide their careers and try to give them the opportunities. This is exactly uh, our goal and it's, and it's coming, it's coming to reality and 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 I'm really really thankful. I thank God for that, and I thank uh, Josh, his father, for for allowing us to to host his first uh, pro debut. Dude, it's a, it's, you, we literally have everything covered. You covered everything with this event, like great, you know, pro debuts, veterans, prospects. You got it all. It's crazy. Last but not least, I don't want to leave him. I don't want to leave this kid out, you know. Last but not least, we also got another pro debut, also from Philadelphia. His name is Tyler Williams, making his pro debut against a tough Mexican fighter from Corpus Christi, Texas. You know, Omar o, o, Omar Reyes, and Manny could tell you a little bit more about Tyler Williams and his manager and everything. Yes, Tyler Williams is once again another. Another kid like we're talking about um, under the tutelage of uh, of um, Johnny Rivera and, and 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 Buddy from Rock Ministry. Um, if if you do not know uh, about Rock Ministry, it's one of the pillars in 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 the community. And I'm not even gonna say in in the Kensington area. I'm gonna say. In the in the world, what they doing at that facility, and what Buddy is doing with the community, it's something that the world needs to pay attention to. That man is amazing. What what he's instilling in these kids, what he's doing is amazing. Is 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 the work of God, is helping the community. He is giving the world the blueprint on how you can do anything you put your mind to it, on how we can treat each other, on how, you know, uh, you can put all your differences aside and, and do the right thing. At the end of the day, we're all humans, no matter what color, race, ethnic background you are. If you go to Rock Ministry, you would not only see, but feel the love. So I'll tell you a little bit about Rock Ministry. They they do not charge any of their fighters to come and train, get top train, uh, trainers. Um, his only, only demand to the fighters is they have to come to to uh, services, um, and 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 follow the 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 word of God and 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 instill 
peace and, and love and happiness into these kids that a lot of them come from broken homes. And, and I mean, it is just amazing. So please, please, you know, go on your computer, Google it, rock ministry and, 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 and the great missionary work that, that buddy is doing over there at uh, rock ministry. Also a brother in, 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 in the union um, industry, as well as I am proud member of local 57. Uh, you know, it's just a great, great concept of what is happening in Philadelphia right now. The movement of giving back, of, of, of bringing the city up, you know, and especially the parts that, you know, nobody really wants to talk about. This man is in the heart of it and is doing amazing, amazing things over there. So shout out to Buddy and the whole Rock Ministry crew. Um, God bless you guys. And, you know, you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, influence me and, and inspire me every day on, on keeping do, to do what I want to do, what Will wants to do, and what our whole team wants to do. Uh, thank you for, once again, allowing us to be the first promotion to to help one of your sons and, and, and one of your kids along in this career uh, that sometimes is not the most easiest and pleasant uh, uh, business uh, ventures to go into. Uh, just means a lot to me that, that you guys are choosing us and waited for us because they were supposed to be on some other events that we had. And unfortunately, we just didn't have the space but now they, they, they're in and hopefully for the long haul. So I, I want to say thank you to Buddy and the whole Rock Ministry uh, team over there. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, again, everybody watching, February 23rd, the Met, the first time boxing is back on Broad Street uh, in 65 years. This is the first event of many to come put on by hard-hitting promotions february 23rd the event is three quarters pretty much almost sold out and we still have a month to go so uh manny's probably gonna call the met up and say you're gonna need to expand a little bit and put some more seats there because we need to pack some more people in there um for everybody uh, again watching 12 bounce count them 12 a whole night of action bell to bell you heard the rundown it, it's it's 12 you can't leave your seat I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how you're going to go to the bathroom or get a drink or I don't know how you can do any of that because you ain't going to be able to leave your feet all night. So shout out to Hard Hitting Promotions. Um, what else you got going on, Manny? Um, you know, once again, I just want to thank everybody, um, you know, uh, for the support, for the love that we've been getting. In reality, all these ideas that, that we've talked about, our whole team, um, every everything that we are striving to do would not be possible if it wasn't for the support, the love, the embracement that we've been getting from the Philadelphia fans. Um, you know, a lot of this we owe it to you, um, you know, and we do it for you. Um, so thank you so much for all the support that we're getting. Um you know, day in and day out, all the encouragement. This is not an easy business, um, but we are, and I've been saying this, we are the new generation. Uh, we are writing our, our own history, you know, our own Philadelphia boxing history, um, and we're so proud of it. Um, you know, I just can't say any more about the, the embracement, the embracement, and the love that we have been receiving from Philadelphia Boxing. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Live Nation, the Met, you know, for for allowing us to host their new venue. Um, for a lot of people that might not know, um, this is not the first time we've worked with uh, with Live Nation. Uh, and one of their uh, venues, we we were the only and 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 have been the only promotion to to introduce to the boxing world one of their other great venues uh, in the Fillmore 
if whoever attended those venues over there in the Fillmore and Delaware, <laughs> it's another great venue that they have. Um, you know, we we hosted, I believe, it was two or three events there, and at the time was compared to the Blue Horizon because of the balcony seating and everything like that. People love that. We're so proud of that. We're, that that's another thing that we really didn't touch on. We're so proud of of the ability that we've been fortunate to have in showing the Philadelphia uh, uh, fans um, different venues. We and 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 been the first to open up grounds in different venues. Um, I mean, from from like I said, from from uh, the starting at the Sheet Metal Workers Hall to. The Sugar House Casino, we were the first promotion to show the Philadelphia boxing world, uh, the Sugar House Casino, um, to go to the Met, to go to uh, the Tropicana in Atlantic City, and I believe was over eight to almost 10 years, something like that, that a boxing event didn't happen at the Tropicana. We brought it back. Um to go to Puerto Rico and host a boxing event and, and mine and Will's uh, uh, beloved, you know, island. Uh, very proud of that. Uh, thanks to our team and thanks to, you know, our partners and John and, and uh, Miranda and John Rano to, to allowing that to happen. Um, to now opening the best venue. I mean, it's, it, it, I don't care what anybody says. I mean, look, everybody's entitled of their own opinion, um, and and there are. But the Met is, and it's going to be for a long, long time, the best venue to watch boxing, live music, any type of event. This is the best venue in Philadelphia, by far, is the best venue. And, and what makes it even sweeter and better and unbelievably great is that they are the best people to deal with. I mean, that in this business is, is, is you know, it's something you just don't encounter. Um, they are truly, truly the best people to work with. You know, I, I really feel like family in there. Um, so when I say hard-hitting promotion, Live Nation, you know, the Met, what we're going to bring to Philadelphia is boxing at its purest, at its best, and Thank you for all the support that we're getting, and thank you for Live Nation and the Met. Absolutely. Again, February 23rd, the Met, like he's saying, uh, hard-hitting promotions, 12 bouts, pure, unadulterated deliciousness of boxing from bell to bell, cover to cover, action to action. Uh, Nick from Absolutely Boxing, our brains around here, uh, he is writing a full article on the whole history of boxing at the Met and the Met itself and tying in the hard-hitting promotions event coming up. We will post that article on Saturday and share it about. So if anybody's interested in understanding the history of boxing at the Met, uh, Nick is going to post that for all you guys. Uh, will, you got anything else to say for anybody? Yes. I would like to thank my, my wife, to you know, to always supporting me, my family, all the Philadelphia fans. All my teammates, everybody in hard hitting promotions, trainers, managers, uh, the drivers, um, our guy that helped us in our event, everybody, Jose, um, all those trainers that you know they put day to day working with the fighters to make them better and better each day. My partner, Matt Miranda, John Miranda, John Pirano. The Pennsylvania Commission. Wow, what can I say? You know, I'm I'm excited. I'm motivated. Um, so so. You know, I cannot describe the word how happy I am for this event. You know, hard hitting coming to hit. 
other than never, you know. You know, we're excited about this event, and we do it with all the respect that all you guys deserve, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Before we close it down, Manny, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, same thing. I would like to thank my wife, our partners, and everything like that. I would like to thank the fans. Um, I, I don't know because I can't see it, but I, um, I would love if there was any fans that had any questions for us. Would love to to answer any of the fans' questions because to me they're very important. Um, you know the fans and and what their input is. I try to listen to it, whether whether you know it's good criticism or bad criticism. I mean that's the only way to get better. So I embrace it all. Um, so if there's any questions uh, that have been posted, I, I would definitely love to answer it. Um, you know, you guys on that. Okay. Any have any questions? Anybody got a lot of people have just been sending a lot of encouraging uh messages. Uh we haven't got any questions. If anybody has any questions, please shout them out. Um, you know, Orlando Fernandez talking about Bizarro, future ball champ. Um, Luis uh Citron talking about Bizarro being a young beast. Um, Orlando Fernandez, he's calls uh Rosa a fabulous kid, he's a gem. Uh, Mary Brown says, yes, we needed a woman in, in the balance. Let's get it. She's all excited about seeing the Israeli princess. Uh, Nidia Feliciano says hi to you, Manny. <laughs> Great. She was she was she was one of uh, one of hard hitting uh, uh, women bouts. She participated. Uh, what a fight that was. Uh, Will could tell you a little bit more about that fight as he was the, 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 the person that put that together for us. Um, but what what a warrior she is. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys seen that fight. It was at the 2300 Arena. Great, great girl uh, and, and an unbelievable fighter. She fought uh, Baumgartner, um, and that was that was a classic. That, that, was, that was a classic. So shout out to her, uh, and thank you for, for, for all the support. Um, Raymond uh, Petrie says hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we also would like to give a big shout out to Damon Gonzalez for the NBA and, and Orlando Fernandez. Great people, you know. We, you know, blessed guys. They very beautiful people to work with. You know, I, I encourage anybody that one would like to put one of the fighters to fight for that title, the NBA title, called Damon Gonzalez, a Latin sport. Great person to work with. Now I have a, I have a question about that. Since Gadwin and Brandon are both uh, NBA champs, is, is NBA sanctioning it? Are they defending these titles, or how does that work? Yeah, for not for this card, not for this card, they not not for this show. But yes, we are planning to uh, do some big thing with the NBA uh, title with this young talented fighters on this year. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, Orlando Fernandez, I saw this, Orlando. But Orlando Fernandez says that Gavin Rosa participated in a children's cancer event here in Tampa with the NBA president, Damon Gonzalez, and, and myself. So that, that was a great event. So he, he posted a lot of pics and said Damon. So, you know, that's awesome. Uh, give him back. Great people. Very great people. You know, God bless them always. You know, always Absolutely. The right thing. And, and I know Will mentioned this. I also want to uh, give thanks. To, to our commissioner, our Pennsylvania uh, State Athletic Commissioner, Greg Serb. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's been a great help to us from the beginning, um, great supporter. Um, you know, some people, you know, have mixed reviews about Greg, but I'm going to tell you one thing is for sure. All he wants is professionalism and to put on great fights. If you can't deal with that, then unfortunately you shouldn't be a promoter. So I, I want to, you know, thank Greg uh, uh, Sir for all he has done for the state of Pennsylvania. And when it comes to uh, the athletic commission, uh, he's doing a great job, and and I want to be able to uh, say this. Um, thank you for for you know always you know pushing us to to be better. Milton, 
Milton El Santo Santiago says, great job to Manny and Will. He's a big fan of yours. Absolutely. Absolutely. Milton is a great kid as well as his father. Another another uh, team that I know for a long, long time as well as Will. I mean, know him since he was a real little kid. Basically born and raised in the boxing. Um, great, great talent. I mean, undefeated uh, is another kid we would love to uh, work with. Uh, hopefully that opportunity will come soon. I, his last fight was with us. His last fight was with us. It was it was the first show box uh, event that, that we had done. Uh, so, you know, thank you to Milton, uh, which leads to my second half of, of thanking somebody else and, 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 uh, and um, that that would be um, some great people that have been involved in his career and other fighters' careers here in Philadelphia, and that's Maz Gonzalez and Eddie Woods, uh, two great people in the boxing game, two managers that uh, have been involved in boxing for a long, long time. Um, and due to, you know, situations in the sport, um, you know, hasn't been involved in the past year or so, but I encourage you guys to stand in there and work with great promoters um, as there's, there is now in boxing and, and continue to do the great, great things that you guys have. So I want to shout out uh, as well, uh, Eddie Woods and, and Miles Gonzalez. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to, one more time, let everybody know, uh, February 23rd, the Met Hard Hitting Promotions put on a 12 bout card, the first boxing event in 65 years, the first of many to come, bringing boxing back to Broad Street. If anybody has any questions for Manny or Will, not for me, I'm not answering questions today. <laughs> Manny and Will are. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and shout them out. And while we're waiting for questions, Manny, uh, you told us about the first event, October 30th, 2015, where the fight oh, where the bout almost didn't happen because your main event fighter pulled out a week and a half before, but you got the stand in and then you got the, the knockdown drag out war that kind of set you guys off. But why don't you tell us the story about your second event while we're waiting for... Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, so we did that event, obviously, like, like you just said, the main event fell out a week before Pedro stepped in, all, all thanks to Pedro and 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 Garrett for for putting on such a great fight and 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 you know and allowing us to have such a great event. But the second event we do we 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 did, um, we were blessed because I'm gonna say we were blessed. It ended up being a blessing. Um, we had one of the biggest snowstorms that year on uh, that day i mean it, it was announced i think they closed down yes they did right well am i right in this that they closed down all the bridges they closed down the walt whitman they, the advanced. They, they closed down the betsy i mean all these all the bridges Everything. coming into the city and out the city were closed down that night people were calling are we going to cancel this event that day, that morning, because of all the uh, winter advisories that were set on every newscast. And, you know, uh, me, Will, and our partner sat down and we we were thinking about, um, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, obviously, this is, this is, this is, this is something that it's just, you know, we, we can't do nothing with Mother Nature, right? So uh, we can't fight this one. Um, so what are we going to do? So what we said was we talked to the fighters, we talked to the fighters, managers, and collectively everybody wanted to fight. And we already were committed a hundred percent. Like I said, this is, you know, the night before the show was when everything kind of intensified. Um, so we said, you know what, we're doing it because at the end of the day, you know, if you preach something, you got to live it. And we're always been preaching to do the right thing. And the fighters were ready. They trained hard. They dieted. They did everything that they were supposed to do. And they were ready to fight. 
So whether there was one fan in the audience or, you know, a thousand fans in that audience, those fighters deserve to fight. So we said, all right, if you guys want to fight and you guys want to have this event, let's let's do it. So we said, let's let's have the event. When I tell you, and it and 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 some people might say, well, you guys might have sold a lot of tickets prior to the event. No, that wasn't the case. It really wasn't. Um, some tickets were sold, and 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 there were. Um, I'm gonna say maybe maybe about a quarter of the tickets were sold of the attendance that we had that night. Uh, we decided to have the event. Um, you know, thank God that there was no snow um, in the morning and in the in the afternoon, so people were able to to get to the venue uh, pretty unscathed. I think it started snowing right around six o'clock, which is when the doors open. Uh, but by eight o'clock, eight thirty, I mean, I believe we had about seven to eight inches on the ground outside. People were mumbling, but nobody was leaving. I mean, the fights were great. The atmosphere was great. I believe we had about eight to 900 people in attendance that night. Um, by the time the event finished, there was a full-blown, uh, 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 you know, blizzard out, out there. Uh, you know, I think I think the measurements that the next morning was over a foot of snow on the ground. I mean, I live, I literally live maybe a mile away from there, and it took me almost an hour to get home. <laughs> so, so that's just how that, and I have a Jeep. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have a Jeep. I don't have a little car. I drove my Jeep down, so it was, it, you know, it was, it was easy to, you know, to maneuver for me, and it took me an hour to get home. So, I mean, it, it basically was a blessing in this way. And why I said it was a blessing is because it showed us how much support we have. And that in only our second show, how much love and support, how much Philadelphia really loves the sport of boxing. And it was so heartfelt when it happened, I remember looking at Will and Will looking at me in, in, in shock that that uh, that this was even going on. I mean, we really didn't expect nobody to come to this event. And and when we seen, I mean, for for that venue to be a packed house, I mean, it was it was amazing. It, it really was amazing. It was heartfelt. <laughs> it was the beginning of us understanding that it's way bigger than us is way bigger than, than what we're thinking. And, you know, it, it shows, it shows that, you know, that was in 2015. We're in the beginning of 2019 and we're, we are chosen, we are chosen to partner up with one of the greatest companies in the world, Live Nation and host a boxing series in the best venue in Philadelphia, the Met. It 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 shows that what we did that day was gonna go a long way. And I, I you know, I'm just blessed. I'm humbly, humbly blessed. I mean, it, it really gives me goosebumps because it it you know, I always tell people and people tell me, you know, no, you're wrong. You guys do belong here. But I, we're, we don't, you know, I always said we're, we're not supposed to be sitting on this pedestal that we are. But we're humbly, humbly on it. And thank you so much to the Philadelphia fans and the surrounding uh, tri-state area fans and the fighters that have from day one, put their, you know, hard work, their dedication on the line to, to come and perform to the level that they have been for every show, day in and day out, 
for us to be successful and be where we're at today. I mean, that is all you guys. That is nothing to do with us. Sounds good, man. Hey, um, just some words of encouragement from Raymond. Uh, God bless. Uh, good work, fellas. Orlando wishes you all the best. And uh, can't wait to see you guys. Um, again, for everybody watching, February 23rd, the Met. It's on North Broad Street. It's right around, it's right around Broad and Gerard, right there. Big white it's, village. Can't it's Broad and Poplar. It's right on the corner of Broad and Poplar, which is another proud moment in Philadelphia. This is on North Broad Street. It is not in the heart of, the, you know, a center city. It is not. They built this gem, a $56 million restoration on North Broad Street. Kudos to all the people involved in that. That is not just a wonderful thing for the Met. It is a wonderful thing for the city. It is a wonderful thing for that neighborhood as there is no doubt that that neighborhood in the upcoming years is going to be one of the best places, one of the most successful places in the city. And they, and they built that. It, it's like you know, Bugsy Siegel once said, if you built it, they will come. And 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 that's what they did. So kudos to them uh, for that. Absolutely. So February 23rd, Broad and Poplar, which is one block over from Broad and Gerard, just let everybody know. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and uh, February 23rd, the first event in 65 years, boxing. That has been there. They were going strong for twenty year, over twenty years straight. Stopped because of the World War II. You'll see that next article on Saturday. First event, sixty-five years. The first of many to come. Saturday, February twenty-third. Twelve, count them. Twelve electrifying bouts put on by hard-hitting promotions. Thank you guys so much for coming on here. This was very informative. This was entertaining. Uh, you just like your fights. You guys covered everything tonight. Uh, bell to bell, cover to cover. I enjoyed so much talking to you guys. Thank you so much for allowing Absolutely Boxing to be a part of what Hard Hitting Promotions is doing. Thank you. Thank you, really. Thank you, guys. Like I said before, if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for the local media, uh, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have the success we have. You know, we have a lot of gratitude to you guys. Uh, you know, you, George Hansen, uh, um, I mean, all the local media, please, if I'm forgetting anybody, is not by design. It, it's just there's so many people that, that we have to thank. Thank yous all. You guys know who you are, and we really, really, really appreciate all the support uh, that, that we have been getting from the Philadelphia fans and media. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much. God bless everybody in the world. Keep warm, every, warm everybody over there in the up north. I know you guys are cold. <laughs> what a spoil. I feel great. You know? Click, click, click the button on them. Click the Shut button, up, Will. guys. Please. Shut up, Will. Don't <laughs> miss this exciting, explosive card at the Met. Hard-hitting promotions. Please don't miss it. It's going to be some fire. Our hidden promotions at follow, the Met. <laughs> follow, them, follow them here on Facebook at Hard Hitting Promotions. Look them up on Instagram. It's at Hard Hitting Hard Hitting Promo. promo. Hard Hitting Promo. promo. Hard Hit Promo. Yes. On all our social media platforms. Hard Hit Promo. Make sure you follow them, guys. Keep up to date because they moving and they grooving. You guys, you got to follow them to see what's going on next. Right? We'll, we'll see we that. have a big surprise. You guys have to move. Yes. Move side to side. You're going to be some blood that night. You know what I mean? Oh. We have a big surprise also for all you guys. Stay tuned. We'll be announcing this in the next day or two. A big, big, big surprise to the Philadelphia fans. No, it's not another fight. But it's probably bigger than that. Please stay tuned to our social media pages. I promise you, not just the local scene, but the world 
is going to be so happy about what we're bringing, what we're announcing in the upcoming days for this event. It's once again another historic event with a historic surprise that we're bringing together. And we're so blessed and so thankful for doing it. And we're doing it all for you guys. Stay tuned to Hard Hit Promo and you would not, you would not uh, uh, be disappointed. I guarantee you. Correct. Again. Don't miss it. Hard hitting. February 23rd. February 23rd. Don't come see the fighters. Come see Manny and Will. Nah, nah. <laughs> because of bounce. You guys cannot miss it. February 23rd. 12 bounce. The first time in 65 years putting on a boxing event at the Met and Hard Hitting Promotions is responsible for that. The first of many coming up. Get your tickets now. It's about three quarters sold out. Manny's going to tell the Met to add some seating so that we can get some more people in there because they're going to need it. We have, for the people, this is something that I didn't talk about, and we're very proud of this. <laughs> we're very proud of this. We have tickets, and this is what we're talking about. We want everybody to enjoy this unbelievable event. We put tickets at $25. Wow. $25 because we want, we understand that not everybody can afford a $50, $75, $100, $200 seat. We have $25 tickets, and I believe that there's some still available. $25 seats for these people that can't afford and would want to bring their family and maybe it's, you know, him and his wife or his wife and the kids or the, or the mother and the kids, they want to come, you know, for $25, which is the price of most amateur events, you're going to be part of history. Very proud of that. We thank the Met. We thank Live Nation for doing that. And once again, it's for you, the fans. Absolutely. And with all that being said, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, we learned so much about hard hitting, about boxing, about history, about the fighters that you're going to see on the 23rd. Uh, go get your tickets, February 23rd. The link is in their bio. We'll have the link posted on uh, all the posts that we do. They'll be posted on our articles on our webpage. There'll be links everywhere for you to go buy tickets uh, to the Met for February 23rd. Uh, first boxing event held in 65 years. Uh, the first of many to come. 12 bouts. Like, I, I don't care who you are. You need to get here and check this out. Thanks so much, guys, for coming on. Uh, I had a blast. This was absolutely awesome. Hard hitting. <laughs> See, see you next time, guys. Remember, go follow these guys, please. Thank you. Thank you very much.